Hello everyone. Welcome to Physics Pathfinder. Today we are going to continue with the second part of atomic structure and emission spectrum. The second session, we are going to start with solving the IP questions. Before that, let me remind you to like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for the daily updates. So before going into detail of solving IB style questions, let's revise few important points that would help in solving the questions. The first point being, every radiation in the electromagnetic spectra is made of photons. Photons are basically packets of energy, which is a discrete value or a specific value. And hence, energy associated with that packet so whenever an electron is receiving or emitting a photon, it would have a discrete energy level that it comes to. So the various energy level that an atom, an electron in an atom can be, has a certain fixed value based on the energy of the photon absorbed or emitted. And these electron energy levels are basically stacked horizontal lines and their transitions are shown as colors. So you can see here, the stacked horizontal lines have specific value of energy, which is very less measured in electron volts. The n is equal to one quantum number has the lowest energy and it's called as ground level when the electron has the lowest energy level. And when it is n tends to infinity, it has the highest energy, which is zero. And when there is a transition, when there is a de-excitation, it comes from one and higher energy level to lower energy level. And when there is excitation, it goes reverse. What we also studied was the possible transitions in hydrogen, which started with Lyman series, followed by Bohr series, and the Passion series. Lyman series and Passion series are not visible to humans as they are in ultraviolet and infrared region, while Balmer series is visible and that's why you see the seven lines of spectrum. Later, we have seen that when an electron receives some kind of energy, it gets excited and go to higher energy level. Let's see what are the different ways of receiving that energy. This energy could be received in the form of collisions with another atom or an electron, absorption of another photon or directly getting heated, receiving a source of heat. In such a case, the electron gets excited and goes to a higher state and it's said to be in an excited state or a state of ionization. So the energy received by a photon, if it is having a particular frequency, so photon is a packet of energy, but during the transition, it's going to be going from one energy level to another based on the condition of the radiation that it is receiving, which is directly proportional to the frequency. And hence the equation E is equal to H lab. HF, which is frequency, and H is Planck's constant, which is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. Now, since it's uh, radiation, you also have an associated energy equation with respect to wavelength. So the two forms of writing the energy equation is E is equal to HF and E is equal to HC over lambda. From this, we can infer that higher the frequency of radiation, higher the energy received. On the other hand, higher the wavelength of light, lower the energy received. It's inversely proportional to wavelength and directly proportional to frequency. Now, this energy is not a mere single energy. It is the difference between the two energy levels. Always E1 stands for the first position it is the electron is, and E2 stands for the second position it is going to. And the energy difference is always final minus emission. 
you always use energy difference and that is proportional to the frequency of the incoming radiation. And that is also equal to HC over lambda that we know. And hence we can rearrange the wave equation if lambda is the question, then it's HC over E2 minus E1 gives you the wavelength of the incoming light. Let's see an exam style question here. In a helium neon laser, electron collides with helium atom. The helium atom is in a ground state, which is state 1s, and it goes to a next higher state, which is 2s. So naturally, it has very less energy in 1s, ground state, and goes to a higher level, 2s. When an electron de-excites from 2s to 1s, it gives away a photon that has a wavelength. So note down that wavelength of the light emitted is 558.4 nanometer. Calculate the energy difference. So if you recollect, we have an energy difference formula with respect to wavelength. You have to get your final answer in electrons. Now note one exam tip. The exam tip is, in the previous equation, wherever you are using frequency or wavelength, the energy difference that you get is in joules. Always remember, whenever you are using frequency or wavelength and trying to find energy, then the energy that you receive is not in electron volts, but is in joules. What is the question asking? The question is asking you to get the final answer in electron volts. So remember, there is one conversion, which would be for the last one mark. So first step would be to write down the things given, which is wavelength given. And you have the equation, lambda is equal to hc over delta e, e2 minus e1. Make delta e as the subject. So delta E is equal to HC over lambda. We know H, we know C, we know lambda. Once we calculate, you should get the answer. This in joules. Now comes the conversion. This much one electron volt is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. You will see this conversion in the data box. Now, if you want to convert joules to electron volt, divide it by the charge of that electron, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. You get a final answer, which is the energy difference in electron volts. So that's how three marks are divided. Let's go to the next part, 1b. An electron collides with helium, which is in the ground state causing the electron to move from 1s to 2s. So remember, the other way to excite an electron is by collision. So we know that during collision, helium requires 21.3 electron volts to move from one energy level to another. Electron initially has an energy of 45 electron volts of kinetic energy. So the initial energy of the second electron is this much. Calculate the electron's kinetic energy after collision. So naturally during collision, this electron is going to give away some energy to helium. How much energy do you think helium will require? We, it will require the same energy that it had emitted, which is 21.3. So what do you think should be left? Very clearly, if 45.0 electron volt is the initial and you take away 21.3, the thing left is just the subtraction of the two, which is 23.7 electron volts. You can use steps like law of conservation of energy, which tells you that initial energy should be equal to the final. Initial energy is 45 electron volts and the difference plus the final energy is equal to the initial. And that helps you to give the remaining. The next part, 
explain why it is not possible for the same electron in B to collide with the ground state of helium and be left with 40. So the same electron which had 45 electron volts of energy, if it collides with helium, it will lose 21.3. Possible for this helium atom to participate, this electron to participate in the transition, that's because for helium, the transition required is 21.3 electron volts. Out of 45, if you take away 21.3, the remaining is not 40. And it's not possible for the electron to just take 5. To go to the next energy level, it requires exact value, which is discrete value. So these are the steps that an electron cannot suffice go to the next energy level just with 5 electron volts because it requires 21.3 electron volts. So it has to be that exact discrete value to move from one level to another. Helium and neon coincidentally have the same energy gap transitions. An excited helium atom in the previous part collides with the ground state of neon atom. The neon atom becomes excited and emits two photons to come back to ground state. So remember this step, it has to emit two photons to come to ground state. What's the question? If energy of one photon is 1.96 electron volts, what is the wavelength of the other? So very clearly we know that the total energy required for transition is 21.3 electron volts for helium. So out of 21.3 electron volts, 1.96 is taken by one photon. So what should be the energy taken by the other? The energy taken by the other should be 21.6 minus 1.3, 1.96, which is 19.34 electron volts. You can see here. Now comes the trick. Don't forget to get the wavelength. The energy has to be in joules. So use your answer in electron volts and multiply with the conversion to get the answer in joules. Now use this energy is equal to Hc over lambda or lambda is equal to Hc over delta E and you get the answer in nanometers which is 64.3 nanometers. Remember the SF, the least SF in the question is 3 so you maintain the same. Let's go to an MCQ now. Look at the multiple choice question, which is paper one. A simple model of an atom has three energy levels. The energy difference between adjacent levels are given. You can see the energy transition. What are the two smallest frequencies in the emission spectrum for this? So you can see the energy difference is directly proportional to frequency. So now read the question and try to solve. If you have seen, you know that there is a direct relation between energy difference and frequency. So the smallest, look for the smallest energy difference. The smallest two energy difference is what is given in the diagram. So delta E for one is this, or two is this. You know that delta E is equal to HF. So delta E upon H is the answer for one frequency. And guess what is H? 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 23. So there's only some power of 10 that is left. So your answer should be either C or D. Go for the next transition. Delta E is equal divided by H should be, this is almost double of 6.63. So which is the answer? The answer very clearly is 1 into 10 to the power 15 and 2 into 10 to the power 15, which is C. Equation and the sums. Let us go to the last question for today. Four of the energy states of an atom is as shown. 
the transition between two energy states is possible. What is the shortest wavelength of radiation that can be emitted from these four states? You can see the energy difference is inversely proportional to wavelength. And we require the shortest wavelength. Shortest wavelength is when the energy difference is the biggest. So which one do you think is the answer? Naturally, it is lambda is Hc over the change in the energy. Look for the biggest change. Biggest change is from the highest energy to the lowest, which is E4 minus E1. So the possibility is either A or B. So the answer is A. That's all for today. Let me remind you to like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for daily updates.